Our guest this morning is the current speaker of the Victorian Parliament, Mr. Thelmo Langwila. It's with great pleasure for us to introduce him in our studios. Good morning and welcome to our program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you and the audience of this uh, very popular program in, in the community broadly, but especially in the Sri Lankan community. A privilege Thanks. for me. Thank you so much. First of all, uh, now you were elected as the speaker on the 23rd of uh, December year 2014. Now you being a member of TANIT, there's a quite a big change being a member of TANIT and become, becoming the mm -hmm. Speaker of the Parliament. Will you be able to briefly tell us the big change? I was first elected to Parliament in 1999. At that time uh, I represented the electorate of Sunshine in Sunshine. Okay. Uh, subsequently, the Electoral Commission made uh, boundary changes and the Electorate of Sunshine became the Electorate of Deramet. And by the 2014 elections, the boundaries had changed so much that my electorate disappeared effectively. But a new electorate was created around uh, Tarnit and Traganina and Williams Landing and Hopper's Crossing. And I was very privileged to uh, have been supported initially by the members of the Australian Labour Party, of which, of course, I'm a member, and subsequently to have been elected at the election of 2014 as a member for TANIT. And uh, the Premier and my colleagues initially in the Labour Party thought that I should be the Speaker of the Parliament, and subsequently, may I say very happily, I enjoyed the support of all sides of uh, government and opposition to become the speaker. And so since 2003, 23rd December 2014, I have discharged uh, my, uh, my duties as the Speaker of the Parliament in the Legislative Assembly. Excellent. Now, uh, very recently, on the 18th of January, uh, there were three flags uh, at the Victorian Parliament. That's the uh, Australian uh, flag, the Victorian flag, and uh, another flag being included. Will you be able to briefly tell us why? Yes. Uh, there were discussions uh, in relation to the uh, raising of the flag and flying the flag of uh, the indigenous people of this country. In my judgment, it was uh, important that that decision was one which uh, would be adopted by the members of the Assembly. Those members who understand the procedures in the Parliament uh, would know that I could have made it incumbent on me, the Speaker of the House, to actually determine that the Australian Aboriginal flag be flown in the Victorian Parliament. My judgment was and remains that the best decision that could have been in order to guarantee a legacy and continuity beyond the speakership of myself was to actually have the members of government and opposition adopt a resolution in the Assembly that resolution was adopted uh, late last year. Yeah. It was a unanimous decision. Therefore, the Australian Aboriginal flag is now flown in the Victorian Parliament together with the Victorian and the Australian okay. one. In my judgment, this is a decision made for life. So I'm very proud of the fact that we are now flying that flag, that the Assembly made a decision unanimously by g government members and opposition members to that effect. And I think it's a terrific legacy for Victoria, for the people of Victoria, and indeed for Aboriginal people in the best spirit of reconciliation. Now the Victorian government is celebrating their 160th uh, anniversary. Are you planning any activities for this year? There will be events. Uh, we are the oldest uh, political party uh, in the nation. I think we can be very humbly uh, proud of our history we are the party that represent uh, moms and dads, working men and working women. We are the party of uh, universal health care. We are the party of uh, free and universal education. We, we, we are the party that has made provisions for uh, low-income earners, for refugees, for migrants of all walks of life to be able to have access to education. That includes myself, by the way. I'm the product of that generation that enjoyed uh, the Gough Whitland, the late Gough Whitland Labour Prime Minister, legacy of the tertiary education allowance scheme, which for the first time made provisions uh, for low-income uh, families like mine, who at the time lived in high-rise public housing, to be able to have tertiary education. 
uh, to be absolutely fair, historically the same program or the program introduced by the then Prime Minister Gough Whitlam was upheld by the subsequent uh, Liberal Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser. But uh, the seeds were planted uh, in terms of education. I think education is one of the fundamental legacies that the Australian Labour Party is always committed to enshrining in our history because we recognise that education is the most transformative weapon that anyone can be given to transform himself or herself, that of his family or the community, as Nelson Mandela would put it. Mm -hmm. So we are going to celebrate. We 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 sure that, uh, and we should celebrate uh, an extraordinary legacy that we have had in this country. Now, recently you had a visit to Sri Lanka, and there were a lot of newspaper reviews mm -hmm. and lots of interviews done. Will you be able to tell us about your recent visit? Yes, I responded to a very courteous and kind invitation extended to me by the Deputy Speaker of the Sri Lankan Parliament. Um, I attended that uh, and responded positively to that invitation because I understand that Sri Lanka is now going through a very uh, challenging and very important uh, period in its history, as you would be aware yeah. and your audience will be aware, would be aware. Um, Sri Lanka, as you know, uh, has established a constitutional assembly for the purpose of uh, working towards a reformed uh, constitution, a new constitution, or uh, or a or change in the constitution as it exists. But what underpins that is uh, fundamentally a, 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 a concept of inclusion, of integration, of engagement with all sections of Sri Lankan community and society. So I want to publicly thank uh, the Deputy Speaker of the Parliament, the Speaker of the Parliament with whom I met, the Leader of the Opposition uh, with whom I met as well, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, the members of government and the members of opposition with whom I met during the course of the, of the week that I was in Sri Lanka. So um, there is a lot of enthusiasm, there is a lot of optimism and there is a very strong commitment uh, to, uh, to bring about a reconciliation. That, I think, underpins amazing uh, enthusiasm around the international community because the fact that you are able to come together, which I think is an extraordinary achievement, and the fact that you're going to work towards the establishment of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in order to address the challenges of human rights that exist in Sri Lanka, particularly in the context of implementing the Lessons Learned Reconciliation Committee report, yeah. I think will send a very good message to the international community that Sri Lanka is serious, that it understands the challenges that it has, that it can deal and address these issues by itself without uh, UN or a, a foreign intervention. I have uh, personal knowledge of uh, the extraordinary depth that exists in the judiciary, in the, the executive, in the members of the opposition, in the parliament itself and the Sri Lankan broadened community to be absolutely confident that you can do so by yourselves and move forward. So I'm delighted to, to report to you through this yeah. channel yeah. that I had a terrific, terrific visit. And may I say, I want to thank especially uh, Don Susanta Katagumpala who organized a great visit for me and the many friends yeah. that uh, were associated with us. I was very privileged and humbled and almost embarrassed if I may uh, where um, on the last day of my visit to Sri Lanka, there was a farewell reception and I had artists, members of the Sri Lanka cricket team, political leaders of government and opposition, uh, members of uh, television, the best actress, male and female. <laughs> there were so many friends that came. My dear friend Ravi, yeah. of course, who thought that was very helpful to me <laughs> during the course of that interview, yeah. of, of that visit to Sri Lanka. So I can't tell you, there were more than 200 people uh, that came to see us and uh, to wish us uh, good luck. And I think that is testament of the friendship that exists uh, between us for a long time. Mm -hmm. Thermo, thank you once again for accepting our invitation. I, I know you are a very, very busy person and it's been very interesting talking to you this morning. I thank you so much. I thank you. Uh, I think the efforts that you make in this uh, channel and uh, the, the opportunities that you provide uh, for us to communicate uh, with the uh, community directly. So thank you so much and congratulations for a good job. Thank you. Thank you.